Welcome to Austin, Texas, and Darrell K. Royal Texas Memorial Stadium, where the horns are up, and this burnt orange crowd is ready to help Texas hook them. We have a ranked versus unranked battle coming up here, and you know how chaos can ensue if they start smelling an upset. As we'll see a squad from the Sun Belt, the UL Monroe Warhawks, taking on the third-ranked team in the land, the Texas Longhorns. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, David Pollock, and Jesse Palmer with me. Guys, it's time to get it going. And the Warhawks will put total leather and will get started. On the run from inside his own five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. The Longhorns offense will have the first possession of the game. And here he comes, a man who epitomizes the phrase, the tight end's always open, David. And yes, he is, Reese. And it's so cool. The tight end position now has evolved so much. You can move him all over the field, and you can really highlight a guy of his ability. Too big for safeties to cover and too fast for linebackers to cover. This is a weapon they've got to take advantage of. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the field. Let's see which way that's going to go. And the defender just way too handsy on that last play. You could see all the contact as the ball was in the air. He simply can't do it, and the referee's caught it. The offense comes back out with a new set of downs after the penalty. Wants to throw. It's Ewers. Working the middle. It's complete. And quarterback receiver on the same page. Nice job seeing the zone, understanding the drag route concept. Easy pitch, easy catch. Trying to get a rhythm in the passing game. Now on second down. Wide receiver shows motion. Here's a quick throw out to the left. Brought down at the 48 after a gain of five. They'll line up right at the 48-yard line on first and 10. Running back searching for a hole. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. All right, well, the offense here, they're trying to get this run game established. They obviously don't break off a long run there, but they're just trying to find their footing at this point. After picking up a couple at second and eight, They'll put the tight end in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Brought to the ground, but not before getting enough for the first down. Well, I know this is an offensive line that has a ton of pride. They want to come out each and every game and really impose their will on the D-line. They got just enough push there on that run play to pick up the first. The Longhorns are marching down the field. From the gun, running back gets to give. And he won't quite get there, but boy, after that pickup, just a few inches to go for the first, an array of possibilities here. Man, when I can run the football like that on first down and create second and inches and stay way ahead of the sticks and, and be in a position now where I can throw the football or run, I will have a lot of success on the offensive side of the football. They go to the counter. The Longhorns are stopped, but not before getting the first down. You got to have short area quickness. That running back there doing what it takes to make sure he got that first down. The Longhorns will snap it on first and ten. Wide out in motion. Smelling that end zone, but they get him down at the four after the big pass play. And I think this receiver's forte is his route running. He's a guy that can line up all over the field, but it's not just catching post routes and goes. This guy can run shallows. He can run slants. He can run the option routes and find soft spots in the defense. This guy really has all the routes in his toolbox. 
fast motion from the offense. A first down run on the doorstep. He steps and powers and works his way. They finally get him down at the two. Second and goal for the offense. Tries again to get it in. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Well, he gets tackled down at the one-yard line, so offensively, do you feel confident enough on third here trying to hand it off again? Yeah, and I'm taking both these downs, and I'm coming downhill. I'm running the football, trying to get this in the end zone. I only got a yard to go. I got to be physical. I'm trying to power it in. Into the end zone he goes. Touchdown, Longhorn! They're bellowing out Texas fight right now as the horns are ready after that touchdown drive. And what a great way to start. Get the crowd jacked up. When you do something good like this early, that burnt orange is going absolutely bananas in the stands. And the rest of the game, the defense, the special team, everybody feeds off their great energy. Ready to try the point after. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. They put together a 65-yard drive for the score, and they capped it off with a one-yard punch. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. He'll bring it back from inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. So the UL Monroe Warhawks offense will try to get something going with their first possession. As we take a look at our impact players for this one, what are you looking for, Jesse, for a guy to make an impact? Well, these are simply put the leaders of this football team, and generally games go how these guys play. If they make plays, then they've got a shot to win this one. No doubt, they got to show up. Th these are the team leaders. These guys have to play well if they're going to win the football game. This crowd going to try to make life miserable for these guys. Looking downfield, it's Harry. Throws to the wideout. Complete downfield. Out to the 35-yard line and a little extra breathing room with that 15-yard pickup. And listen, you get zone coverage and you can hit that curl route and he comes open continually. Keep hitting it. This might be a play to come back to. They'll snap it on first down from the 35. From the gun. Give on the inside. Didn't get much done on that run. He'll fight his way out and maybe, maybe pick up a yard. Awesome job up front by this defensive line. Being so good at the point of attack and eating blocks, eating some double teams that allows these linebackers to run free, unencumbered, and get to the football. Back to the ground with the running back. Just sort of a relentless run, getting everything that was available to him, and they'll mark him down at the 40. And runs like that are like body blows in a boxing match. Four, five, six-yard gains early turn into 20, 30, 40-yard gains later. They really wear down defenses, and they test their physicality. Out of the shotgun on third down. Finds his man in the middle. They'll get the first down. It's spotted on the 49. And this junior quarterback shows you why the scouts love that big arm of his. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. You're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. To the air on first down. He's right on target. And he broke one tackle on the way to a solid pickup there. And a really nice job by the wide receiver. You run a drag route, fine space. They're in zone coverage. They're not covering man-to-man. -man. Find a little hole. Look at that QB. Y'all get on the same page. You could tell they were, and that's why they got the first down. Sixth play of the drive coming up. 
They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. And this one will be stopped for no gain. Second and short equals bow up, be physical, move a hole, get a gap, let my back fall forward. That back had nowhere to run, no push up front. Got to be more physical, Jesse, on those second down and short situations. So for that point, David, I think you got to stick with it if you're on offense. As a staff, challenge your guys to get some push up front. You've recruited this position really well. You need these guys to move some bodies because you've got a talented guy in the backfield that can hurt this defense if you just give him a crease. The Warhawks line up to punt it away. He ought to be able to use this first punt to pin him deep. And that ball will sail into the end zone for a touchback. And here comes the Texas offense back on the field. You want to talk about a drive where you impose your will? That's what they did running it down for a touchdown, David. There is nothing more demoralizing than that for a defense. To be physically pounded, the run is coming, you know it's coming, and you can't stop it. Nothing the defense can do. That is mano -y mano up front, and your guys getting a push. They know you're running it, and they still can't stop it. Offense gets set for second down. Caught behind the line. It's Bond. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, nice job about the defense. That's what you're supposed to do. As soon as they catch the football, you want to limit that yards after the catch. And he went nowhere after the catch. Nice job by the D. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. On third and long, he's going to have to throw for it. He's got it. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. Both teams made no secret. They wanted to target their big play receivers, and they've done just that in the first. They've switched ends of the field, and we're ready to get things started here in the second. And the Longhorns with the first and ten. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Wide open downfield. Really good job hauling that pass in. You know, I know Texas is a place a lot of people think about great DBs, and they've had a lot of really good running backs, too. I think the receiver position is one, though, that they want to build a legacy around. This guy right here, he's really stepping up in this game today, and he's a guy that Longhorn fans, they need to keep their eyes on for years to come. Looking for a gap. It's blue. After the pickup of nine, it's second and one. Yeah, this coaching staff, they're getting this offensive line lathered up and into a rhythm. Now they're letting them drive off the ball on first down on these running plays, and they're getting chunks of yardage. Nine-yard pickup on first down, and now they can take a shot on second and short. Holds and fires complete to the right. Dances away again. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. All right, second quarter, getting closer to the half. Offense is still having a lot of success, stringing some first downs together. Defense is going to need to figure something out before they get to halftime. And the Longhorns want to move quickly. They move the tight end all over. From the gun, he leaves it with the back. Relentless, tough running gets it down to the four. You've got to be able to gang tackle this guy. We see it every week. He makes people miss. And you just saw it on that last play. He's unbelievable in the open field. He can cut on a dime. And with that run, he's got this offense now set up down close to the goal line. Keep it on the ground. He works his way all the way down to the three. And the defense is reeling. Tight 
tight quarters deep in the red zone, but they can pick up a first down without scoring. Third down. Looking to throw for it. Let's it go to the end zone. And it's caught. Touchdown, Texas. One of the areas they really focused on with this receiver in the offseason was we need you to make more plays for us in the end zone. When we're taking shots. We need you to be able to step up and make tough catches. David, what a grab right there. And I think a lot of that has to do with trusting your guy, knowing where he's going to be, knowing when he's going to sit down when he's not. So being on the same page and then having a guy that can go get it. Just when the ball is near him, he's going to make the play just like he did right there for six points. Lining up for the PAT. And the extra point makes it 14-0. So it's an 80-yard drive. And they finish it up with a three-yard scoring toss. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. From inside the 10, here he comes. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. Guys, we'll see what this Warhawk offense can get done this time. Now we'll get a chance to see if they can answer that last score, trailing by 14, Jesse. Yeah, and at this point of the game, I feel like offensively, you should go back to what's been working for you in this game. Don't be afraid to dial up plays that you've already had success with, running it and throwing it. It's okay to repeat plays down 14 at this point. And I would also say, Palmer, kind of understanding that my defense is not playing great. So I know offensively, i got to put some good possessions together here, make something happen on this side of the football. He'll do it himself. They've got it out to the 34 after getting five there. It must have been a brutal week for this defense preparing for this game because of all the different ways they can attack you and because of how athletic this quarterback is and how he can hurt you running the football. He just showed it to you right there. And the Warhawks in the hurry up. The give to the running back from the shotgun. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, there's a statement by the defensive line. First down play, expecting run, and they just dominated up front. Beat their one-on-ones and forced a tackle for a loss. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. To the air. It's Herring. And it'll be incomplete. This defense is physical in pass deep. I don't know if the quarterback read the coverage properly on that one, but obviously the result is an incompletion. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Receiver looks it in. It's complete. And quarterback dropping back, understanding I'm getting zone coverage. All I got to do is be a little bit patient, manipulate that defense a little bit. My wide receiver runs that drag, and I get the first down. The Warhawks will try to pin them back with the punt. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Solid punt headed toward the sideline, trying to make it tough to return. And here come the horns. They've got it again on offense. They wanted to set the tone, strike quickly. Jesse, they've done exactly that, up two touchdowns. And this quarterback has been dialed in, too. He's been so good reading coverage, going to where the open guy is with the football. And they've been up and down the field, David, so far. And this defense needs to make something happen right now. You've already given up a couple touchdowns. Your offense has got nothing going. Still early in the game. Get a stop. Create some momentum for your offense. Stacked up after gaining a couple to the 23. And offenses want to continue to feature the run. They want balance. Even if it's not super successful, you can take it a little bit at a time just to keep that defense honest. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. Just threw that one away to avoid disaster. 
And offensively, we know it's hard throwing the ball in third and long situations because the defense can play big zone coverages. They got a lot of guys with their eyes on you. So the QB had no shot there. Nobody open. Nice job not forcing it, not risking a turnover, just throwing it away. The Longhorns will punt it away on fourth down. Getting our first look of the afternoon at the punter. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. Ewell Monroe has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. Smith takes the handoff. Really nice, patient job to find some running room by this junior. And here we go. If you're an offense, you've got to get that ground game going so you can have some balance, and then you give it to your quarterback, Palmer, and let him make some plays down the field later on. Yeah, exactly. And coming into this game, this offense knew they were going to have to some way, somehow, at least establish a semblance of a running game for exactly what you just said. You've got to be able to use play-action pass later in this game to get some explosive plays down the field. And it's a play like that that we just saw, which can help them get that going. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. Out of the gun, the inside give. He showed it all there. A little elusiveness, a little power, and he's got the first down. That has got to be demoralizing if you're on defense because they just ran the ball right up the middle, down your throat, and they gashed you. And the Warhawks will line it up on first and 10. After run, 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 now throw. Pulls it in. They've got it inside the 30. They'll mark it at the 28. It's first down. And when you get zone coverage and you're running curls and the wide receiver sprints off the ball, you know what happens? That DB starts to bail, and that wide receiver comes back, and it's easy pitch and catch for the offense. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. We've reached the two-minute warning, and this thing has been one-sided, and they hope to at least have something to feel good about going into halftime. This first half of offense won't go on the highlight reel so far, but starting to get things moving, it's first and ten. Looking for a man, it's Herring. Fires to the middle, and it's incomplete. If you're going to take a hit like that, you might as well hang on to the ball. Well, it was a good throw, it was a good route, but it was the hit that forced that incompletion. Didn't connect last time. Let's see if they throw it again on second down. From the gun. Nowhere to go, and the ball is loose. Bounced right back to them. Woo. Deep breath, right? Man, you, you fumble that thing, you cough it up, you're like, oh. I really appreciate you, brother. I can't tell you how much I thank you because the coaches would have been all over me, but big-time break for the offense. Got to get to the line quickly for this third down play. Looking to throw, and he needs a chunk play. Pulls it in. It's Smith. You got to love that on defense. One of the most critical statistics out there is how do you play on third down? How do you prevent the opponent from keeping drives alive? Right there, tackling the catch. You gave up the completion. Whoop de doo. You set up fourth and long. You're going to get the ball back. Go get some water and celebrate. Now on fourth down, they'll settle for a field goal try. This one will be a 45 yard attempt, and he'll kick it from the left side. Never a doubt. Right down the middle. So they're lining up to kick it off after that last drive. Put a three spot on the board, and now the defense will try to shut him down. Here he comes from inside his own five. Not a lot of space to be found. Good hustle by the coverage team, and they stop him at the 21. So now the Longhorns take over, and they'll send out the offense. Finds his man. It's Bolden. He's brought down solid. Pick up, but a little bit short of the first down. 
I think really good wide receivers do a good job of making every route kind of look the same. You could tell he, he this looked like a vertical route. So if I'm a DB, I'm bailing, and then all of a sudden he sits that hitch down. Nice job by the wide receiver, creating enough separation to create a positive game. Scanning the field, it's Ewers. Oh, he's going to take a shot at the DB. The offense will quickly use a timeout. Nice play design on that one. You make it easier for your quarterback, too, because it's easy to see what's happening right in front of you. Over the middle of the field, you can see where defenders are dropping. You can see where the soft spots are in zone coverage. And just a really nice job by the QB locating his guy, making an accurate play. They make the stop, trying to pick up just a little bit at a time to get to that first down marker. I'll say this, man. In college football, you see a lot of bad tackling. You didn't see it right there. That was an awesome job. First off, being there at the point of attack, once the tight end made the catch, there was no doubt he was going down. Great job, form tag. Finds his big tight end. Timeout called by the offense, and now they just have one remaining in the half. This offense is clicking, everything working together really well. Coordinator, quarterback, offensive line. Good rhythm, good flow. Defense is going to have to find something to kind of mess up this timing they got going on. Snagged in the middle. It's Bond. They make the stop, but not before they do their work up top and pick up a first down. Well, this defense now is just getting gashed. If you're the defensive coordinator, you might now want to think about being aggressive, changing up your play calls, and maybe breaking your own tendencies because you have got to stop this offense just marching down the field. Looking to pass inside the red zone. Quick strike complete. Touchdown Longhorn! Made the snag and strolled his way into the end zone. The defense has to be better on the back end. They knew this offense was going to come out, and they were going to challenge them. They were going to try to push the ball vertically down the field. They've now given up two touchdown passes in this game. They've got to shore up their play in the back half. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And with the extra point, they're on top by 18. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And they finish it up with a 15-yard scoring toss. So here comes the kickoff after the touchdown. And the last thing you need right before the half is to give up a big return. From inside the 15, here's the return. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. Under a minute to play here in the first half, and the offense will take a knee, and that is how we'll wrap up the first half. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin and our halftime update. Thanks, guys. Looks like we've got a superb matchup in Austin today. And we have to start this halftime breakdown by addressing the play of this elite wide receiver. This is clearly a young man who, once he's finished playing on Saturdays, he's going to be playing on Sundays. The kid has different gears. He has a knack for finding gaps in the defense. And I can't remember a college player with that kind of catch radius. And with that, let's get it back to our fellas at DKR. The Longhorns will kick it off to start the second half. He'll start the return inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Guys, we'll see what this Warhawk offense can get done this time. They'll open the second half on the ground. Out across the 20 to the 21-yard line, a three-yard gain. Small gain, I know, but again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass. Make him honor the run game. You've got to do a lot of this. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. To throw, it's Herring. He makes the connection. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Hey, QBs, when you see zone covers, man, can you manipulate defense when you have a good pocket and you've got time to throw. He had a little bit of time to throw. You can move guys with your eyes. That drag comes wide open. 
Good throw, good catch, first down. Give to the back. And he's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage by the big defensive tackle. Great team defense on that run play. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones. D linemen staying in their gaps. Linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. The Warhawks want to pick up the tempo. On second down, they'll take to the air. Makes the grab. They stop him almost immediately. Short gain there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. And that's a good job by the drag route there, understanding its zone coverage. So instead of continuing to run across the field, he settles down into an open spot, making it easy for his quarterback. If every journey begins with a step, this offense needs to step into a third down conversion and then try to turn it into some scores. Makes a catch at the 20. Touchdown, Warhawks! And once he found daylight, it was Katie bar the door, baby. Man, that's a play this kid has been running ever since he was seven years old at the park with his best friend, throwing him go routes right down the field. I'm running by a guy, I'm looking back, locating the football, making the catch, and he does it in a big moment here in this game. They'll try to tack one more on their score. And with the extra point, they draw closer. It's 21 to 10. A very efficient five-play scoring drive. And the finisher coming on a touchdown pass from 52 yards out. They've cut into this lead. It's down to 11 as they're set to kick it away. From inside his own 10, let's see what he gets. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. So Texas has it again, and here comes the offense. They unleashed an aerial assault last time that took him right to the end zone, David. So, Reese, with that drive, I think you've accomplished something you wanted to accomplish. Make this defense think. You put them back on their heels. Now, shoot, Palmer, you might be able to slip a few runs in on this drive to really jack them up. Yeah, I like that idea, but I also like the fact that speed kills, and they've got it at the receiver position. So if you've got one-on-one -on -one matchups, man, take advantage. On the ground, it's blue. And there were no creases or crevices to run through, and they shove him out of bounds. And it's just simple. Simple first down run, showing your physicality, setting your offense up in a good spot. Got three on first down. It's second and seven. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Grab behind the line. It's golden. Tackle is made at the 44, but he picked up 10 yards and enough for a first down. The Longhorns come to the line with a new set of downs. From the shotgun, they'll run it. Ran right through the defender, and now he's still running. Ripping through the defense and getting it all the way down to the 24-yard line. Yeah, I tell you what, I'm always keeping track as a defensive coordinator of where they're running the football. You can see they ran it to the right. Do they like this matchup? Is the right side of their offensive line really good? I'm going to be paying attention to that because that's a big game. i got to make sure I shut this down the next time they run it. Off the play fake on first down, wants to throw. And the pressure was all over him in the blink of an eye. The defense just simply not fooled by the play action. Oftentimes, as an offense, you're hoping the run fake's going to slow down those pass rushers, but man, oh man, they had their ears pinned back. Now the offense has to overcome the negative play after the defense comes up with a sack. 
From the gun, the running back has it. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. You know, the runner just has to have a little bit more patience. He bounced that thing outside a little too early and as a result, lost yards. And whatever they did on first and second down, don't do that anymore. Third and very long coming up. Unloads to the wideout. Oh, they really could have used that catch. Their physical pass defense, it brings up a fourth down. Really nice third down sub defense there at that time. It's third and long. They're expecting pass, and they're mixing up their looks. They're trying to change the picture pre-snap to post-snap to confuse the quarterback, and now forcing the incompletion setting up fourth. They'll try to put three on the board as the field goal unit comes on. It's good, and that will extend their lead even further. How nice is it as a head coach to have a kicker like this? It makes these decisions on fourth down so much easier. Just strut him out there and let him stroke it through the uprights. After putting up a three spot, the kickoff unit set to go. From inside the 10-yard line, he'll bring it back. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. Ewell Monroe has it back on the offense, ready to go to work. Dropping back, it's Herring. This is when the pressure can ramp up a little bit on an offense, David, when they start feeling the heat to answer a score. And I think being down 14, you can kind of feel that way. But, dude, if you put a good drive together, this is a seven-point game, so Palmer, no need to panic. I was just going to say, David, I mean, this thing can flip quick. You go down, score, all of a sudden your defense gets a stop, or who knows, better yet, gets a turnover. This game is entirely different. He's going to pass. Got his man quickly. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. Now, and a great job by the defense seeing it right away, reacting to the screen, going and getting the football, and getting the fast playmaker on the ground. After the short completion, let's see if they go back to the air. Out of the gun, the give to the back. And a good, solid pick up there before the defense knocks him down. And this offense just has to find a way to convert this third down or else they are really in trouble. To the ground to try to move the chains. They convert on third down as he gets it to the 46-yard line. Yeah, and I just need a crease. I need you offensive linemen just like right here. Great job holding the point of attack. Don't let any penetration come in. Give me a little sliver, and then you see the running back, Palmer. He'll do the rest, lower his shoulder, and make sure he gets the first down. Yeah, it means a lot to this offense, too, to have a guy like this that always just seems to fall forward. He always, in these short yarded situations, knows where that first down marker is, and he's able to get those hidden yards in piles, driving his legs to help keep this drive alive. Hey, I'll tell you what, that slot receiver, he may not be the biggest receiver in the world, but he is shifty, and he runs really good routes. You saw it on that play. And the Warhawks racing to the line in the hurry up. The give to the back. We'll give him a couple on that one. Second and eight coming up. The Warhawks are threatening in the red zone. Back to throw, it's Herring. Fakes the grab on the left. He's really close to that first down marker, but they stop him just a bit short. I like the decision by the quarterback here. Just get the ball out of your hands, get it to your playmaker. A lot of times he'll dance and make even bigger plays than he did here, but it was still a positive game. They'd love to pick up this third down and get a fresh set with first and goal. They'll go to the air on third and short. He caught it! 
Oh, and he thought he might be able to wiggle his way into the end zone, but they knock him down at the three. He might have expected to see this DB up in his receiver's kitchen instead. Nice little zone, and they pick up the first. Man, offenses are getting so good, Reese, at seeing the holes in the zone, knowing your end zone, knowing where to sit down, how to make it an easy pitch and catch for the quarterback, and that's what it was on third and short. And you got to get locked in in the red zone. A lot of defensive coordinators, they'll tell you, we'll give up yards, but we got to understand what we're trying to get accomplished. Great job down here near the goal line. This defense bowing their neck up and getting a big stop. Can the D deny them on second and goal? They'll run it up the middle here, looking for a path to the end zone. And he'll get this one back to the line of scrimmage, but no farther than that. And you want to talk about his favorite receiver, it might be everybody, based on the number of guys getting touches and a chance to show off their hands in the passing game. As we start the fourth quarter, it'll take a pretty sizable comeback to win this one. You can't hear yourself think on third and goal. Pressure coming. And they got him for the sack. That's a good example there of complementary defense. The DBs and linebackers are playing zone. They're playing their spaces, and they force the QB to, to have to hold the ball, try to work through his progressions, and then the pass rush. They win up front. They'll play it safe and try for three. It is good! They were able to get a field goal on the board, and now they'll kick it away. And he takes this from inside the five. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. The Longhorn sending the offense back onto the field. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. Crosses the 30 to the 31 and a six-yard pickup. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got to lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. Fires to the tight end. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. I love an offense that wants to stay aggressive. Even when you've got the lead late in a game like this, right, you still try to find your playmakers and get them the ball in space, and that is exactly what this offense is doing. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. Motion from the offense. Off the play fake on first down. Finds a man on the left. And chunk plays are the name of the game, and they get one here before the defense finally makes the stop. This is so interesting right now, watching this offense stay aggressive. They've got the lead in the fourth quarter, and you're thinking at home, we got to just run the ball and try to bleed the clock. They found something on defense they're taking advantage of. Two straight completions. I won't be surprised if they throw it again. They finally get him on the ground, but the big running play moves to change for the first down. And David, how demoralizing does it have to be for a defense when you know they're going to run it, everyone in the stadium knows they're going to run it, and still, you cannot stop them? There is nothing more demoralizing as a defensive lineman because it just it ticks you off. It gets in your head. You, you know that guy's going to come off and smack you, and you got to do something about it. I think the defense may be time to start committing more guys to stopping that run, not worrying about the pass as much. 
can't find his man as he took a shot trying to deliver that football, and it'll be second down. Doesn't take this defense a lot of time to get to the quarterback, man. They've got speed all over the place. They hit him so quickly, and because of that, the ball falls incomplete. And the incompletion brings up a second down. Grabbed behind the line. It's Bolden. He picks up four. That'll leave them with third and six. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre-snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly, and that's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm right now. They're close enough for a makeable field goal from the 26, but they'd love to convert this third and long. They'll try the run. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Yeah, and when you get penetration by that defense right away and there's no way to cut at all for that back, he gets destroyed right away. No way that play was going to be successful. Way too much penetration. And they'll send out the field goal unit. This one will be a 45-yard attempt, and he'll kick it from the left side. Between the uprights, it's good. And they'll push that lead out a little further. After putting up the field goal, they're set to kick it away. On the move from inside is five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Guys, we'll see what this Warhawk offense can get done this time. Got his man on the right. Now they've got even more breathing room out to the 31 and a fresh set of downs. I think if you're the head coach at this point, you're telling your offense, it doesn't matter what's happened up to this point of the game. Obviously, things haven't gone our way, but we have a chance to execute in a two-minute situation and give ourselves a chance to win. Let's go do it one play at a time. Looking to pass. It's Herring. Looking left. Incomplete thanks to the great defensive pressure there that sort of threw them out of rhythm. And there's an example of what happens when the quarterback doesn't have a chance to set his feet. The pressure just forced him to have to work off schedule a little bit. And I think because of that, he wasn't able to be as accurate as he wanted to be. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Dialing up a second down pass play. Took a shot as he threw. Nowhere close on that one as he got drilled trying to deliver the football. And now they face third down. Well, he didn't have a whole lot of time to get rid of that one. The defense was all over him right after the snap. No wonder that thing fell incomplete. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. And the incomplete pass will bring up fourth down. And now such a tough situation late in this game. You're trailing, but now it's fourth and long. Like, it's one thing if it's fourth and short. This makes it even more difficult. you got to have something dialed up you feel really great about. Down by multiple possessions, they can't come up empty on this drive in the fourth quarter. They'll go for it on fourth down. Coming after it. And they get to him and sack the quarterback, and they'll stop the drive on down. In the situation we're in, down two possessions, they obviously had to go for that one. And because they're not able to come up with it, it looks like they're going to be leaving this stadium with it. Here comes the Texas offense. David, they couldn't pay off that last drive with a touchdown. Now they moved the ball down the field and executed like they wanted to until they stalled out and had to settle for a field. Going for it all. And that deep shot's going to wind up incomplete, but we do have a flag on the field. Let's see what the official says. The officials offer the deal, and the coach accepts it. They will take the penalty. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Quickly out to the tight end. They bring him down, but a solid pickup to put them in position to pick up a first down. 
This offense is not letting up, guys. They've got a lead here late, and they are still taking shots. They're still looking for explosive plays. This defense just has not had an answer here all game long. And the Longhorns are in the red zone. Wide receiver shows motion. Single back formation, and they give it to him. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Great job at contained by this defense. And in order to do that, the end man on the line of scrimmage defensively has got to be able to set the point and force the football back into traffic. And that's exactly what happened there. Now on third down for this offense. They keep it on the ground. Clock is their friend. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped a really big play. They came into this game today knowing that this guy was going to have to leave his mark in this one, Tote in the Rock, and he's done that. He's come up with some big plays, and he continues to do that here late at a juncture where they've got to continue running it if they're going to win. Turning to the running game on first and goal. He pushes his way down to the four as they get closer and closer. Yeah, nice run, and I, and I think everybody knows. He's right there next to that 100-yard mark, 98 yards on the day. And that's a mark, man. When you hit that mark a lot of times and you take care of the football, you win a lot of football games. It's the more physical team. It's the team that makes it easy, makes it easier on their quarterback, and they've done that today. Hand off from the gun. And he takes it in for the score. Touchdown, Texas! When you're handed a break with unbelievable field position like that, you better finish the deal, and they did. You saw the quarterback jog on the field. I think he gave a high five to every one of those players coming off that just put them in position to go score that touchdown. That QB knew this was a golden opportunity, and boy, he took advantage of it. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point splits the uprights, and they're up a full three touchdowns, a 21-point cushion in the fourth. Kickoff team is on the field. They'll try to drive this one deep. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Uel Monroe has it back in the offense, ready to go to work. He wants to start this drive with a pass. And the physical play there forces the incompletion on first down. It's a nice adjustment by the defense here. With a big lead in the game, you're putting extra DBs on the field, knowing the offense has to throw to get back in this one in the fourth quarter. So your best cover guys on the field, and they force an incompletion on the last one. And after the incompletion on first down, this offense looking at second down. That's caught. It's Smith. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. You just get the feeling this defense is going to make it hard on them, right? They've got the lead. It's late, and they're going to try to tackle everybody inbounds. Offense is going to have to really work for this and be smart. you got to attack the sidelines. you got to throw first downs. you got to keep this thing moving vertically down the field. On third and long, try to convert through the air. That pass not close as he got drilled trying to deliver it, and it'll bring up fourth down. They'll leave the offense out there to try to get it past the marker and pick up the first. On fourth down, they'll try to throw it. He's going up top here late in the game. Downfield and in, complete the defense holds. Line gets set, first down. Handoff to the single back. Not much working there. It'll be second and nine. And the defense is still fighting. They, they haven't had the day that they dreamed of. You know, talking to the coaches coming to the game, like they thought they had a good plan. They'd be ready to attack and, and, and limit some of the damage this offense has done. They haven't done it today, though. They've got to go back to the drawing board, figure some things out, because this wasn't a great day.
Takes a handoff. It's blue. And he has a solid gain before the defense bottles him up. And there's nothing more frustrating than when you get late in the game and you know they're running the football and you don't stop them. It's been that kind of day for this defense. They haven't played well. They're going to have to go to the well. They're going to have to figure some things out. Practice this week, I can promise you, will not be a lot of fun with these coaches. They'll try to pick it up on the ground. He is tackled, but it'll be a fresh set of downs. Yeah, they've had a day. And it's the complete and total offense. They got the ground going, and obviously this is why you see him. You're going to feature him because he can churn those legs, get those extra yards, but they've had balance throwing for touchdowns. Like, this offense has been very complete today, and that's why they're winning so big. 